A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord? I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets, so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity. But the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. American television has ruined our Christian sensibility. Now, I know it sounds cliche, maybe even downright obvious to say something like this, but I would like to throw a few examples out there. Leave it to Beaver, The Waltons, The Cosby Show, these wonderful family-oriented shows that bring us to a problem and get us right back out of it in 30 to 60 minutes. Bad things can happen, but it's okay. By the time we get up from the chair, everything's fine. Or better still, wait till next week when nothing I have done today will even impact what happens to me tomorrow. Where there's no follow-up, no sense that what I can do can have a negative or even a positive impact. No, we just wipe the slate clean. Well, dare I say that uh, Habakkuk would disagree with American television. I certainly would. And I would certainly embrace his words today to us that sometimes the trial endures. Sometimes bad things happen and they don't easily go away. And this shouldn't be surprising to us. This has been going on since the dawn of time and even more so since God cradled Israel close to himself. Because here we have thousands of years ago the people crying out to Habakkuk, help us, we're under tyranny. At this point in history, the king of Judah is nothing more than a figurehead paying taxes to the pharaoh of Egypt who is claiming this territory as part of his protectorate. And the people are saying, do something about it. Tell God, intervene for us. And Habakkuk is saying, be careful. This has happened before. We push God's hand, we don't endure, we think we know what's best, and then in the end, bad things happen. And it was no different here. In fact, they did push God's hand, and they did cry out, we can't wait. And Habakkuk warns them, and within a generation, Egypt's gone, there's no longer a problem because Babylon has come in and conquered them and kidnapped everyone and brought them into exile. The quick and expedient answer is not always the best. Sometimes there's something to be learned from our endurance. To bring it a little closer to home, as preachers, as those who minister to the people of God, if we deny that even in the Word of God there are some bleak moments, then we fail to live up to our own vocation. In his sermon to pastors, St. Augustine writes, What sort of shepherds are they who, for fear of giving offense, not only fail to prepare the sheep for temptation, but even promise worldly happiness? God himself made no such promises. On the contrary, God foretold hardship upon hardship to the end of the world. And you want the Christian to be exempt 
from such hardship? Precisely because he is a Christian, he is destined to suffer more in this world. Precisely because we are Christians, we are destined to suffer more. I recall a time last year when I was working with a women's group in the local jail. And this woman came to me, um, she had children, was expecting a grandchild, and she was awaiting trial for her first offense of drug-related charges. And we studied scripture together, we talked about her problems, and this went on for quite a while. And her trial finally came up and she came back to me later that day and she says, brother, I don't know what happened. I've been sentenced to 12 years. Where is the hope there? Where is the joy? How do you respond to that kind of trial, literally? And as I ponder that, I think the answer is not to pretend that I can fix it, not to pretend that those next 12 years are not going to be the most grueling time, but to embrace it for what it is, a chance to actually reach out to someone else in suffering and be human. To admit that, yes, this is a struggle. I wish it were over. I can't do that. But I can be with you to some degree and do whatever I can to be at your service. So I think in responding to Habakkuk's words here, his warning, today, tomorrow, regardless of what the trial is, we should try to remember. The trial does go on, but we have the obligation as Dominicans, as Christians, as followers of God incarnate to reach out to that humanity and to embrace it. And if I may leave you with my own poetic license on the words of Saints John and Paul, how can I unite myself to the sufferings of the Christ I cannot see if I cannot unite myself to the sufferings of my brother and sister Christian who I do see.